Hello and welcome to my presentation, Saving the Planet One Query at a Time. My name is Hannes Mühleisen and I am a researcher at the CWI Database Architecture Group. Data analysis is at the core of decision making, be it for public policy or for companies' uh, directions. Here in this example, we see um, some data from the recent plague uh, being aggregated into a plot and these plots are then used to shape public policy. Um, and for this, Systems are required that can transform large data sets into derived data that is then, for example, used to drive uh, such visualizations. One key economic effect that has made the collection of ever increasing data sets possible uh, is the massive decrease in storage costs. So here on this chart, we see the cost to store a single gigabyte of data. And in 1980, this was on the order of a million uh, dollars per gigabyte and now in 2015 we are back we're down to something like 10 cents per gigabyte and this massive decrease has made it possible to amass monstrous amounts of data on this picture uh, we can see a data center and these data centers they house large amounts of computers and large amounts of computers are commonly used to crunch through large data sets um, the common method to uh, analyze a, a large data set is to throw a large amount of computers at this data set and then these computers start you know processing data every computer processes a part of the data and in the end we get a, a final result um, this is just the data center that i happen to look at from my office window and you could say maybe that this got me thinking is this huge data center <clears throat> strictly necessary to analyze data um, traditionally, um, the method of using many computers to solve a problem is uh, referred to as horizontal scaling, and this is the standard solution in data analysis as well. Um, typical systems like Spark or Flink have this philosophy that if the data analysis should be slow, the solution is to add more computers to it. And their entire architecture makes it, makes it quite easy to add more computers to the problem. Um, but this also creates a very little incentive to improve the actual performance of computation. Um, and this is expressed here as cycles per value, I should explain. Uh, cycles per value refers to the amount of CPU cycles, so processor cycles, that are an average required to process one value of data. And if this value is high, then you have a very high base cost to process a single value but this doesn't matter so much if you have many computers if you can just add computers to the problem this base cost gets amortized by the just the sheer amount of computers but this creates amount a huge amount of waste so if i have to buy rent a lot of computers these, these computers have to be built they have to be powered the power has to produce somewhere it produces co2 heat and so on um, it also just costs a lot of money so this horizontal scale-out solution is certainly feasible, but it's also extremely wasteful. What we really want to do is get to a more efficient resource usage. And this is really, I think, a, a theme of the times as well. Um, and we are really forgetting the a massive amount of compute power that is available in you know, with household computers like laptops or your phone. Um, they're really, you wouldn't, probably not think that because you're constantly complaining that it's too slow. But these devices contain enormous amount of processing power and also a large amount of storage. And it's actually been shown that 90% of the so-called big data data sets are perfectly feasible to be analyzed on a single node. And these are refers to data sets that are in the tens of gigabytes. And <clears throat> this is formally known as vertical scaling, where we increase the capability of the overall system by increasing the capabilities of a single node. But rather than getting a bigger computer, what we propose is to reduce the amount of cycles per value, meaning increasing computational efficiency for data analysis, and thereby increasing the capabilities of a single node to the point where they can process workloads that were impossible you know, to, to analyze on a single node in the past. So, in the past where you would have said, oh, this data set is big, I need Spark. In the future, you might be able to say, this data set is big, but it still can be totally analyzed on my laptop. So DuckDB is a project that uh, has been initiated here at CWI. 
that attempts to bring big data back to single node. Uh, for example, to make it possible to analyze tens of gigabytes of data on a MacBook. Um, DuckDB is a free and open source piece of software. We uh, produce it here at CWI, but we provide it at no cost to the uh, general public. And if you want to look, we have a website as well. And in the following slides, I will give you some uh, more insight into the DuckDB system. So first of all, why is it called DuckDB? Uh, well, there's a picture of me and there's a duck on my shoulder. And this used to be my pet duck called Wilbur. And uh, DuckDB is just named after little Wilbur. So DuckDB is mainly powered by two key innovations that uh, also originate from CWI. The first is columnar storage. Columnar storage uh, means that we reorganize a tabular data set, not by the rows that values occur in, but by the columns they occur in. And this greatly reduces the computational complexity inherent in analyzing these columns. The second is vectorized processing, where we split up those columns into smaller chunks of columns um, and stream those through the processor, which are also further increases the efficiency by leveraging the um, uh, various layers of caching uh, that are uh, in, inside modern CPUs. So together, columnar storage and vectorized processing give DuckDB a competitive edge in data processing efficiency. So how fast is DuckDB? Well, here's a, a plot that uh, is the result of an experiment that we did um, with DuckDB on the one side and Spark on the other side. And DuckTV runs on a single node, and it runs a specific computational task, which is uh, running a SQL query on a large data set. And that task finishes in 15 seconds with DuckTV. So that's nice. And then for Spark, if you run Spark on a single node, it will take something on the order of 120 seconds to, compute, to finish this task. But as I said, uh, Spark is designed to be expanded with additional computers in order to increase efficiency. And so that's what we did. We added more nodes. This is the X axis on this plot uh, and measured what the response time of this, the same question is then. And you can see that it took 32 nodes for Spark to beat DuckDB on this simple analysis, which is quite a lot. Uh, if you take 32 times the hardware to uh, match the performance of uh, another piece of software on one node of the same hardware, that's that's pretty excessive. And that's exactly what I was referring to before when I said that computational efficiency of cycles per value really matters in data analysis. Research groups are notorious for producing large amounts of uh, software that is not really meant to go beyond the prototype stage and is trying to prove a point rather than actually trying to be a piece of software that contributes to the uh, overall uh, you know toolkit of software available. With DuckDB, we have decided to really go the extra mile and do the, do the amount of engineering that is required to go from the research prototype stage to the actual being able to use by someone kind of stage. Um, so for example, DuckDB is being tested whenever we make any change to the system. Millions of tests are automatically run to make sure that the system still works as expected and still is as fast as it's expected. Um, we believe that by making a system that people can actually use, um, the impact of, of research is greatly enhanced. Um, we can write a research paper and that's being gonna be read by a couple of people, this is great. But we can also make a piece of software that's gonna be potentially used by millions of people. And given that our research is of course taxpayer funded, for which we are very grateful. Um, for us, being able to deliver direct impact in the form of software that people can use um, means a lot. Other people have also uh, recognized uh, the potential of DuckDB. Here is a, a screenshot of Hacker News, which is sort of the premier international venue for news about uh, computers in general. and. Uh, DuckDB managed to get to the uh, to number at the number one spot in the trending news uh, some months ago, and we were very excited about that. Also, DuckDB is already in use uh, around the world, including uh, several Fortune 500 companies. Let me also try to make an outlook into the future of data processing. It has been very common that uh, devices, for example, your a power meter. Uh, pushes all, all the data it collects into a central cloud where analysis then happens and, for example, the amount of uh, power that you use is, uh, is computed. I think that there is a 
a chance that we may, may be able to decentralize data again um, using systems such as DuckDB, uh, which means that we could push data analysis into the devices that actually collect the data. And this has a very big impact, a very big potential impact on the on privacy issues, on legal issues with regards to data collection. And I think it's just a much better system than uh, to centralize this would be to keep data in the devices that it collects and analyze there. Obviously, um, we also fully expect that DuckDB will take over the world and be used in a large amount of devices um, in the very near future. One thing that I have to say though, and it's something that we've seen a couple of times already, is Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law basically states that works expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. And this is unfortunately also true for data processing systems, where if you make something faster, the only thing that's gonna happen is people throw more data at it than before. So we will have to keep innovating in that space in order to stay ahead of Parkinson's law and hopefully reduce um, the energy waste that's inherent in, um, data, in current data processing systems and replace them with data processing systems that use less um, computational uh, effort and thereby saving the planet. Well, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much.